Hi, this video is going to give you a brief overview of classical civilization. So the four classical civilizations we're going to quickly touch upon are Greece, Rome, India, and China. By the end of this video, you should be able to answer the question as why were each of these civilizations considered classical? All right, so in order to answer that question, you have to actually understand what classical civilization means. So a classical civilization is a place that had cultural advancements beyond other areas during that time period. They often leave behind traditions and knowledge that still affect us today. We're going to start in classical Greece and to understand Greece you need to understand the geography of Greece. Greece is very mountainous. Do you know what mountains do to people? Especially 510 BC? They isolate, they separate. There are no airplanes to just fly over the mountain or tunnels through the mountain. So having my, uh, mountains in an area isolates the people who live there. As a result, Greece never became one large empire. Rather, they had a lot of city-states. And the two main city-states that you should know about are Athens and Sparta both very different. So first we'll do Athens. One of the largest contributions of Athens was a direct democracy. This is the first place that democracy was practiced. And direct democracy means that everybody comes out, the men, the male citizens would all get together and discuss and vote on laws, taxes, etc. in Athens. Sparta was very different. Athens was about um, democracy and learning and culture. Sparta was very militaristic. And boys at the age of seven years old would be taken away from home and sent to military academies where they would train 24 seven until they were ready to be soldiers and fight. Another contribution of classical Greece are their philosophers. So what's a philosopher? A philosopher is a man who sits under a tree and thinks deep thoughts. He asks big questions like, what is the meaning of life? Why am I here? And that's what they did back in Greece. I would, in, would not suggest it as a profession today. It really doesn't pay well. Socrates, okay, and here is one of many quotes from Socrates. The way to gain a good reputation is to endeavor to be what you desire to appear. Okay, so that kind of means fake it till you make it in philosopher speak. Next is Plato. He was a student of Socrates. He was not a really, you know, optimistic kind of guy, a bit of a downer. Only the dead have seen the end of war. Last is Aristotle quite different than Plato. He was a romantic. Love is composed of a single soul inhabiting two bodies. Okay, so, yeah. So, Greeks had many contributions and why it's considered a classical society. The Olympics began in Greece. The architecture of Greece, specifically columns, 
was are still used today. If you go to many libraries and governmental buildings, they'll have that ancient Greek look. The artwork, the sculptures, the philosophers, democracy. Those are a few of the contributions of ancient Greece. Next is the Roman Empire, which was around between 27 BC to 476 AD is the accepted year of the fall of the Roman Empire. Rome is a little city in Italy. And at the time of the Roman Empire, starts where Italy is, looks like a high-heeled boot on a map. Thanks to their large army, the Romans were able to conquer lands around Italy. All of the land, literally, around the Mediterranean Sea. Rome adopted some of the architecture from the Greeks, and you can see here there are a lot of columns. If you go to Italy today, you'll still see a lot of buildings that use columns, and they added arches to their architecture. Roman baths were way ahead of their time. So people who lived in the cities would come to these public baths to get clean and to socialize. And the floors were actually heated from underneath. There's a saying that all roads lead to Rome. It's kind of true. And this is a little map of some of the roads. And as you can see, they all converge on Rome. This helped them to manage their large empire by being able to access them. Some of the Roman contributions was their architecture, which they adopted from the Greeks and then expanded upon by building arches. The Colosseum is probably their most famous building. Their thousands of roads that they laid, aqueducts, which are systems to move water from one place to the other, the Julian calendar, which is very similar to the Gregorian calendar that we use today, and their art, their sculpture also. All right, we're going to India, the subcontinent. We're in Asia now. 320 to 185 BC is when the Maurya Empire controlled a large portion of northern India. They had a very strong central government, as opposed to local areas each running themselves. This enables India to uh, spread and become an empire. Hinduism is born in India and is a core part of the culture of India even today. The caste system under Hinduism says that you're born into a certain class based on who your parents are. Whatever class you're born into, you stay there your entire life. It does not matter what you do. If you're brilliant and hardworking, if you're in a low caste, you stay in a low caste for your entire life. Same thing with the high caste. You could be slow and mean and lazy, if you're born into a high caste, you stay there, you marry someone in your caste, you live with people in your caste, you do the jobs of people in your caste. The only way for someone in a lower caste to rise up is to be really good in this life. Then when they die, they're reincarnated into a higher caste. Buddhism, another major religion that thrives today, began in India. Buddhism is about enlightenment. It is about giving up all of your desires in order to let go of sadness and suffering. So basically, the short explanation is, if you don't want anything, you will be content and happy, and you will find enlightenment.
all right, the contributions of India. India created thousands of years ago the first sewer systems. They also can be thanked for algebra and calculus. They're the first ones to use them. And the number zero, we mentioned Hinduism and Buddhism, and they also built strong, large stone buildings. Last classical civilization, <clears throat> China. China is in Eastern Asia. It's a very large company, country today. It's the third largest country in the world. So the government of China were, was run by dynasties, which are families of leaders. When the emperor dies, his son becomes emperor. Now, the way for a family to get into power is through the mandate of heaven. So God tells your family you're supposed to rule. And there's something called the dynastic circle. So God tells your family to rule and you get to rule as long as things are going well. There's peace and prosperity. You rule for generation after generation. But if times start to get hard and there are natural disasters, if taxes go up too much, if there is too much war, then you lose your mandate and another family gets the mandate and the cycle starts again. The Great Wall of China. Most people have heard about this. It took a thousand years to build and is over 5,000 miles long. It's one of the amazing structures in history and in the world. Confucius is a very important person in Chinese history today and back in the day. He was a famous philosopher and a teacher. Many Chinese build their lives, their beliefs, and their culture on the teachings of Confucius. He was an advocate of education. He also felt that it was important in order to have peace in society. Everybody had to have their place and the father was the head of the house and you respected the father unquestioningly. This is called filial piety. He also uh, created the civil service system. So this is still used today. If you want a government job, uh, for instance, if you want to work for the postal system or you want to be a police officer, you take a test. Whoever gets the highest grade on the test gets the job. Okay, this is thanks to Confucius. So the Chinese contribution, Conf Confucius and the civil service system, they created silk. They were the first ones who uh, discovered the silkworm, which is how you get silk from a worm. Bronze, they were the first ones to use bronze, gunpowder, and paper. So these are a few of the contributions of the Chinese civilization and their classical period. So did you take some notes? Can you answer the question? Why were each of these civilizations considered classical? History and a riddle. So you listen to the history part. Now you get the riddle. You ready? All right, this is not a history riddle. It's more science-based, but let's see how you do with it. Why can't you trust an atom? You think you get the answer? Because they make up everything. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you liked it, give me a like and follow because I'm always making new videos.